So first the NCRT questions. This is under the heading thinking about it. Question number one. What was France expected to be prepared with for school that day? So France were expected to prepare his homework on the rule of participles that was given by his French teacher M. Hamel. Question number two. What did France noticed? Uh, what did France notice that was unusual about the school that day? So France noticed a couple of things which seemed to be unusual that day. First, the silence when there was no commotion in the school that day while he reached school. Second, he noticed that his teacher M. Hamill was dressed very nicely as if there was some sort of a function. And thirdly, he noticed that today the last benches of the class were also occupied by the village men of the uh, place. Question number three. What had been put up on the bulletin board? So on the bulletin board uh, near the town hall, there was an information or the order that came from Berlin was put up according to which from next day onwards, la uh, French language would not be taught in the schools of Alsace and Lorraine, but instead of French, German language would be taught. Question number four. What changes did the order from Berlin cause on school that day? Or what changes did the order from Berlin cause on the day of the last lesson? So the order that came from Berlin that day was that in the Lorraine and Alsace districts of France, French language would no longer be taught in the school. Rather, it would be replaced by the teaching of the German language. Now, by this order, obviously, the teacher M. Hamel, who was the French teacher, he was there to deliver his last lesson. And everyone present there were extremely shocked and sad. Question number five. How did France's feelings about M. Hamel and school change? So France's feelings about M. Hamel and the school changed uh, that on that specific day. Why? because he was already prepared and ready that you know he would get a scolding for arriving late to school and for not doing his homework but on that very day the teacher did not scold him rather he was very gentle very kindly he asked him to take his seat despite the fact that the child was late other than that uh, the teacher seemed to be very uh, you know uh, gentle and very kind on that specific day other than that for the school also he felt that probably the atmosphere, the thing, the next day is going to be very, very different. Now, these questions are under the heading, understanding the text. Question number one. The people in the story suddenly realize how precious their language is to them. What shows you this? Why does this happen? So people in the story suddenly realize the importance, the value of their own language. Why? Because they were aware, according to the new order, that from now on they would never be able to learn their own language. Because they would now be taught a new language, a complete foreign language that is German. And the fact that they had not uh, learned their language well and their right, the privilege of the mother tongue was, taking, was being taken away from them, was being snatched away from them, was now actually making them feel really uh, bad. And they were just regretting and they were ashamed of that fact. Now, question number two. France thinks, will they make them sing in German, even the pigeons? What could this mean? Now, this statement could have a, not different meanings. Like first me, uh, meaning could be that France realized that just for pigeons, cooing is very natural to them. This is what the pigeons do. Therefore, for the people living in France, it's very natural for them to learn and know their own language. That is the French language. It was their privilege. It was their right. And therefore, no, nothing should be, and this right should never be taken away from them. But today, uh, you know, uh, when they got to know that they would not be able to learn their language, their mother tongue, their native language uh, is being taken away from them and rather an entirely new language was being, um, uh, you know, imposed on them. That is the German language. So that is very difficult for them to know. They would never be able to relate themselves to that language because they are completely alien to it. That is not something that binds them together. 
so the very fact that you know learning a new language uh, by taking away one's own language is not easy so they could probably not feel the connect so all these thoughts were going on in his mind now the questions given under the text thinking about the text question number 1 when people are enslaved as long as they hold fast to their language it is as if they had the key to their prison can you think of examples in history where a conquered people had their language taken away from them or had the language imposed on them so you know uh, what happened in the story because of a war you know a first place got defeated and others were a uh, different uh, the uh, power that won that you know introduced certain reforms imposed their language so this is not new right this things this this kind of event has happened in history many times for example if we talk about napoleon so napoleon was uh, you know became the ruler of france and uh, when he had the idea in his mind that he need to expand the french territories so when he started conquering the neighboring areas the different areas he tried to actually implement and impose not implement but he imposed on those annexed or conquered areas that their the french language is to be taught so this is just one of the examples and you can find many in the history question number 2 what happens to a linguistic minority in a state how do you think they can keep their language alive for example punjabis in bangalore tamilians in mumbai kannadigas in delhi gujaratis in kolkata So if you see there is a language which is probably a minority punjabis would be a minority in bangalore gujaratis would be a minority in kolkata tamilians would be a minority in mumbai so it's not like people are not moving they definitely punjabis would be found there but they would always be a part of a minority so everywhere the minority group they try to you know actually work in the official language so that they can just go to their work place and whenever it is about functioning in the society they would do it like that using the official language that is hindi english which is understandable by one and all but to keep their language alive to keep the love of their language to you know have the essence of their language uh, because language is an integral part of who we are so for keeping that thing alive they do have their own small communities they celebrate their festivals or whenever they get together with their own people they speak in that language so this is how the uh, minorities in different areas try to keep their language intact question number 3 is it possible to carry pride in one's language too far do you know what linguistic chauvinism means so well it is definitely possible to be proud about our language to have pride not proud to be yeah actually to be having to be proud about one's language to love our language but if we are saying that i love my language then that love should have a point where i should stop it should not be like okay i love my language but i i do not respect i do not give uh, acknowledge someone else's language so if my love is extending beyond and is actually making me uh, criticize someone else's language making me hate someone else's language then that is what i call uh, what we call linguistic chauvinism where we do no, where we are only concerned about our language we feel that it is the most superior language and we do not value or give respect to other languages so now we've discussed the ncert questions now coming to the uh, other questions that is working with words and grammar and writing skills so that would be covered under the writing skills section which would be done separately now after discussing the ncert questions let us now move and discuss the previous year cbse questions from uh, like in the last 5 to 6 years whatever questions have come up from this chapter we are going to address that now so let's start so here we are going to discuss these questions under two headers one would be the short answer type questions and the second one would be the long answer type questions here we are talking about the short answer type questions question number 1 why did france not want to go to school that day or same question in a different language what tempted france to stay away from school 
So for both the question, the answer is more or less the same. It's just that you can just, you know, kind of uh, rephrase it uh, if the question demands. But the central idea here in the question is that France was first of all not uh, willing to go to school because he had not done his homework on the rule of participles as he was expected to do for that specific day. It was being given to him by his teacher and he had not done that so he was scared. More than that, uh, whatever, there was a bright sunny morning, the Prussian army was drilling, the chirping of birds was there. So all that thing seemed very pleasant to him and he just wanted to skip the school for that day. Question number two. How different was the scene in the classroom on the day of the last lesson? Or why was France confused? What added to his confusion? So France was confused on the last day of on the day of the last lesson because when he reached school that day the school was in complete silence. There was no commotion, no noise of children talking, playing around or moving of desk. Rather everyone was seated at their place, the teacher was also there in the class. And when he entered the class, he saw that the behavior of the teacher was also a little more gentle. The teacher seemed to be, a kind, be more kind that day. And uh, the teacher was dressed with his best attire that he used to wear only on the days of prize distribution or inspection. And more than that, he saw that today the last benches of his class were also occupied by the former mayor, houser and the other villagemen who had also come there along with their books to attend this class. So all these things actually confused France. Now question number three. How different did M. Hamill look that particular morning in the last lesson? Or what was unusual about M. Hamill's dress on his last day in school? So M. Hamill on that particular day wore a dress that he used to wear only on the days of price distribution or inspection. He was wearing that dress which was a very bright pretty green coat along with his frilled shirt and silk, a black silk hat. Question number four. Who occupied the back benches in the classroom on the day of the last lesson? Why? Or why were some elderly persons occupying, uh, were occupying the back benches that day? Or who were sitting on the back benches during M. Hamill's last lesson? So the point here is that on that day, uh, there were few elderly people which included the former mayor, the houser, the postmaster and the other villagers or the village men who had come there to attend the last day of, uh, to attend the uh, last lesson of M. Hamill because the a teacher M. Hamill was giving his service in the school in that place for past 40 years and today was delivering his last lesson. So everyone was present there to express their respect and gratitude for the teacher. Question number five. Why is the order from Berlin called a thunderclap by France? Or what announcement did M. Hamill make? What was the impact of this on France? Or, this is your last French lesson. How did France react to this declaration of M. Hamill? Or, what a thunderclap these words were to me. What were those words and what was their effect on France? Or, what a thunderclap these words were to me. What were the words that shocked and surprised the narrator? So probably this is, seems to be a very important question which has come up in so many different ways in the past few years. But the answer is more or less the same that there was an order from Berlin that seemed to be a, like a thunderclap for France and everyone present there. They were completely shocked here listening to it and that order said that because France was defeated by Prussia in the war, therefore the, in the Alsace and Lorraine districts of France, from now on, only the German language will be taught in the schools and the French language will not continue. So all these things, whatever this order said, completely shocked everyone who were present there. 
Question number six. What changes came over little Franz after he heard Hem M. Hamel's announcement? Now, when the child heard uh, M. Hamel's announcement saying that, you know, tomorrow you are going to have your new teacher, you will be learning a new language, that is the German language, and I will be leaving the school uh, from tomorrow. Now, no French classes. So, look, hearing all this, the child felt completely shocked and he started feeling and regretting that why, you know, in the past he had skipped his classes, uh, going here and there, doing some useless activities and how he had neglected learning his own language, how even today he had not done his homework. So, all these thoughts were going on in France, might. Question number seven. Why were the elders of the village sitting in the classroom? So the elders of the village were sitting in the classroom to pay tribute or rather to express their respect and gratitude to M. Hamill for his service from the past 40 years. Question number eight. And here also because, you know, M. Hamill was leaving the place the next day and they would not be able to see him. They would not be able to learn uh, the French language from him anymore. So question number eight. How did Franz perform when his turn came to recite? So Franz was not prepared. He's not, he, did not, he did not do his homework. So when his turn came to recite the rule of the participle, he just fumbled with the words and uh, he could not say anything. So he just bowed his head holding his desk and he was very much ashamed of looking at the teacher. Question number nine. We've all a great deal to reproach ourselves with, said M. Hamill. Comment. Or, why does M. Hamill reproach himself for his students' unsatisfactory progress in studies? So here, if the question is like this, so you're just going to uh, raise the point saying, uh, which is just, just saying that why M. Hamill is blaming himself. And here, all the other uh, reasons like, whosoever M. Hamill is blamed have to be mentioned. So I'm going to say here, the first part here, if the question is like this, so here M. Hamill uh, says that there are a lot of people who need who needs to be reproached, that is they are to be blamed for the unsatisfactory performance. First, the people themselves who have did not have the desire to learn the language, who were just putting off learning to tomorrow and now that tomorrow is never going to come so everyone who thought that they have plenty of time and they can just learn tomorrow they can do the work tomorrow so for them now that tomorrow is never coming so the people are to be blamed secondly he blamed the parents who were just not showing their interest in their children's studies making them skip classes so that they could ask them to work on the fields and farms in order to earn some extra money and thirdly, he even blamed himself why, as to why, you know, and this point is also the sole answer for this question. So here the teacher is blaming himself. Why? Because on two points. First, whenever the teacher wanted to go for fishing, he gave the children a holiday. And secondly, many times the teacher gave some personal work to the students in the class instead of teaching them or, and, and, or, instead, or instead of teaching them, like asking them to water the plants in the garden. Question number 10. Whom did M. Hamel blame for Franz's inability to his questions? Or how were the parents and M. Hamel responsible for the children's neglect of the French language? Or what was M. Hamel's regret on the last uh, or on the on the day of the last lesson? Or who did M. Hamill blame for the neglect of learning on the part of boys like Franz? Now again, whatever answer I gave for the previous question, more or less it is the same here. So if the question is the first one, whom did M. Hamill blame from Franz's ability to answer his question? This one, this one and this one is having the same answer like the previous one where the parents, the teacher himself is blaming himself and the people. So all those three points are to be written if a question is in is this, uh, this or uh, this. Now, if the question is about parents, then just the fact that parents are also making them children skip the classes, asking them to go on and work on the fields to earn extra money. So if the question is this, just that point is to be written. Similarly, like the question here, where only the point where M. Hamill is blaming himself, that is to be written. Question number 11. 
how did m hamel praise the french language so according to m hamel the french language was the most beautiful most logical and most uh, clear language of the world and uh, the people he, he said that the people must preserve it and must guard it irrespective of the fact of being enslaved question number 12 what shows m hamel's love for the french language so again the answer is more or less the same m hamel praised his language saying that it is the most beautiful language of the world the language is the most it has the it has most of the clarity and it's the most logical language so for him it is the most beautiful and the logical language question number 13 what did m hamel tell them about the french uh, language what did he ask them to do and why so m hamel tell them that the language is the, again the most beautiful language and uh, most valuable and one must protect it even if from uh, even if the people are enslaved they must protect their language they must guard their language that's what he's asking them to do now question number 14 what made m hamel cry towards the end of his last lesson so m hamel was getting very emotional because of the fact that from the next day he will be leaving the place forever where he had been for past 40 years he would not be able to teach his language again and therefore he was getting very emotional in his uh, on the day of his last lesson question number 15 how did m hamel say farewell to his students and the people of the town So M Hamel said farewell to his students and the people of town he actually wanted to speak something but then he was getting so emotional that his voice was choking and therefore he just took the chalk and wrote on the board in, in huge uh, letters he said long live france not said he wrote on the board long live france and then with his hand he gestured everyone to leave so this was his way of bidding farewell to everyone present there Question number sixteen: Why did M. Hamel write "Where will love France" on the blackboard, or what did M. Hamel write on the blackboard before dismissing the last class? What did they mean? So, before dismissing the class, M. Hamel wrote in big letters on the blackboard "Where live France," which meant "Long live France." Now here we have discussed the first section that is the short answer type questions. Now under the section of long answer type questions, now let's see which questions have come up in the past few years in the CBSE board examination. Question number one: How different from usual was the atmosphere at school on the day of the last lesson? So the unusual atmosphere of the school on that day or on the day of the last lesson was that. there was no commotion there was complete silence everybody was seated the teacher was there he was not scolding anyone he was dressed very nicely and uh, everyone the village men were present today to take the class question number 2 how did the order from berlin change the situation in the school now this question we've already discussed under the section of the short answer type we just need to elaborate that a bit and the answer is more or less the same Now question number 3 the order from berlin aroused a particular zeal in the school comment again these two questions more or less are the same just the language is different you need to just rephrase it and write it not exactly rephrase it but you just need to elaborate on the central idea that has been discussed under the section of short answer type question question number 4 everybody during the last lesson is filled with regret comment everybody during the last lesson is filled with regret for not attending classes for putting off learning to tomorrow for skipping the classes for not doing the homework for not paying attention to what the teacher taught them for not learning their language and uh, for uh, you know for everything for being uh, like for uh, like they blame themselves for putting off to tomorrow they and even the teacher blamed himself the teacher blamed the parents also so everyone regretted the fact that from tomorrow the very right of learning their own language their own mother tongue would be taken away from them forever 
Question number five. Our native language is part of our culture and we are proud of it. How does the presence of village elders in the classroom and M. Hamill's last lesson show their love, show their love for the language? So native language is definitely a part of our culture, of a, is also a part of our identity of who we are. And definitely on that very day when everyone came to know about that order, that from now on they would never be able to learn their own language, their own something that is an integral part of who they are. And therefore everyone from the little kids to even the village elders were present that day to attentively and dedicate uh, in a very dedicated manner attend the last lesson by M. Hamill as he was leaving the next day. And from now on, they would never be able to see and uh, learn from this teach from their teacher. And now the right to learn the language is taken away. And now they are enslaved by the Prussian people and they would be teaching them a new language, their language, and that was the German language. So on this note, the question answers which have been asked in the previous year board examinations have also been discussed. So the complete chapter is done. We've done the narration of the chapter. We've read and discussed uh, the summary also. And uh, we have, apart from summarizing and discussing the narration or going through the narration of the story or the plot, we've even discussed the NCRT questions and the past few year board examination questions. So here, uh, the very good message that we learn uh, from this story is, that many of us we love our language right we love the language but like you know we said about the communities for example the punjabis the marathis the biharis the tamils etc so everyone have their own language now many people learn it love it and many people are not truly really valuing their language so this lesson specifically uh, tells us that how we should love our language love our mother tongue at least learn be able to learn that language we should be able to speak we should be able to read and write in that language understand that language right so because it is a part of who we are so on this note i will sign off and i'll meet you next with the next chapter or the next story until then i wish you all the very best thank you